Alright my friends, it's Krebsy and we're on the War Thunder dev server, it's patch 1.37.10.0, the mouthful dev server. <laughs> and there's so many changes that has gone on with this dev server, so much that I'm going to be making a three part series on these changes. The first part that you're watching right now is going to go over the preliminary patch notes and also just showing you what it all means, including explaining the new progression tree because a lot of people seem to be confused on how this works. The second video is going to be about the new maps, showing some footage flying around the maps and also any tactics and stuff that I have initially uh, taking a note of and the third video is going to be flying out with individual planes planes of interest I mean come on how could you not want to see the 75 millimeter dong on the HE the HS 129 B3 this this beauty look at it <laughs> look at it yeah anyway so I thought we'd start off this by uh, going through the aesthetics. I've got my little laptop beside me with all the preliminary patch notes. And so we'll start off the aesthetics, the things that you notice in front of your screen. So you'll notice that there's a whole big change with the user interface. Lots of color changes, things have been mixed around here and there. There's no more events bar and just floating around the screen. In the top of our screen there is silver lions, golden eagles, and this new thing which is research points. So that's what our free XP used to be. Free XP used to be to convert uh, your free experience that you gained from leveling and that would add more levels so that you could unlock future planes. Uh, now that is research points. Research points can be used to unlock planes, can be used to unlock individual equipment and whatnot. It's probably just a way to monetize the game even more. And why do I say it's probably a way? It is a way to monetize the game even more. Uh, and get more usage of these XP points so that people feel like there's an actual usage to them. But one thing actually came to my mind, what happened if if you ever, in, in, in before the 1.37 patch, what if you converted your XP and you got like to rank 20, but you didn't buy any planes uh, at all? Does that mean that you just spent all those golden eagles, all that real life money, converting XP, getting levels to basically get nothing? Because if you don't buy the planes, then you're gonna have to research all the planes, buy buy them and whatnot. So if you converted XP previously, there's kind of no point if you haven't actually bought any of the planes. Which means you're kind of throwing money at Gaijin and... Yeah. Anyway, so, so that just came to my mind. I was thinking about it a little bit. Um, and it seemed peculiar. I thought I would mention it to you guys. But anyway, here we go. So there are a number of changes, including the renaming of game modes. It is now arcade battles, realistic battles, and simulator battles. Realistic is historical previously, and simulator is, is for real battles previously. So... Uh, those are name changes, but I have heard a few things here and there, and mind you, these are just rumors. I don't know if it's going to actually translate over to full release, maybe it's just because of the dev server, but I heard a few people saying that the realistic battles were almost always, well, pretty much always alternate history. As in, everyone was mixed in, all these different nations mixed in, uh, as if it was arcade battles, but it was only the control schemes that were different. I don't know if that's going to translate over to the full release, and I would hope not, because I would like to see, you know, Americans versus Japanese, uh, Br Brits versus Germans and whatnot. I mean, that's the whole point of having sort of, sort of realistic battles, is it not? Uh, but th those are rumors. Please do not hold me to it. Do not say Krebs said this, and thus that's what's going to happen. It's just what I have heard, anyway. Uh, custom battle settings may now be changed without le leaving the session. Really? That's good. Because now a lot of times uh, when you have to, have to go into custom battles and you have to change stuff, sometimes you have to close the custom battles. And I, I might as well actually point out one thing now. Custom battles are all hosted... Oop, connection error, my bad. Are all hosted on Gaijin's servers. So there's no more... Of this issue with going out into custom battles and then disconnecting because previously everyone was just connected the the server was hosted on somebody's computer 
And I have a feeling they did this because there were a number of live streamers when they were doing custom battles. People were disconnecting and really, it was just a whole mess with the custom ba battles. So it's good to see that it's now hosted on Gaijin servers and it'll be more reliable, more stable. Research and modification menus have been reworked. Oh yeah, they definitely have been reworked. So you can see that everything has changed, including when you go out into the individual modules and equipment on planes, you'll see that they follow a system that looks very similar to what we're used to as of 1.35. However, there has been some slight changes. We've got all this ranking sort of stuff here. You know, you have your tier 1 equipment, tier 2, 3, 4, 5, and eventually once you've gotten enough equipment, then you can research your next plane, which is at the bottom. You have to work through that line of progression. And you don't have to get every single one of these upgrades to go on to the next rank. It's usually two or three. And they gave an example in the dev notes that they were using, say, you have to get three equipment and then you could move on to the next one, so on and so forth. Uh, until you can work your way to get the a, a new plane, but something that they have introduced now in this patch is Well, here we go. It's no longer what we were used to what we were used to was whenever we were leveling up our equipment or all the XP that we would earn in battles would eventually unlock um, Equipment and sometimes you'd get multiple equipment unlocked. So say if you had a really good game uh, sometimes you would get fuselage repair and radio radiator lock unlocked at the same time, but now That's changed because you can now only upgrade one of these at a time I don't want to actually get this with golden eagles. No, but you can only upgrade one of these at a time See how there's a, a research bar here a progression bar. That means I have not flown out with this plane at all because I don't have any XP leveling up this fuselage repair and until it's fully uh, I, I have full progression in this then I can unlock it I have to get full progression then I can uh, research this and use it on my plane but I can only do this with one equipment at a time so if I want to get the radiator see I have to press this research button over here and then it switches over to the radiator so I'm only able to do one thing at a time so if I go into out into a battle now, the only XP I get will be on this radiator. It won't be on the fuselage repair or offensive MMs or my bombs or whatever, even though I have them available to start researching. It's only going to be this radiator one at a time. Which is, oh man, it's a, it's a bit, it's, it's, it's strange. It's definitely a way to increase the longevity of the game. I can see why they're doing that. And maybe... And maybe the why they're doing it is because so many people have reached high levels in the game and in a relatively fast period of time. So I guess they're probably just trying to prolong the game, increase the law lifespan of it. Maybe this is what they initially planned to do all along. But it sort of makes it similar to not exactly like a system like World of Tanks, but it's definitely putting an emphasis on individual planes, on individual uh, equipment. All at once at a time. Now then, when researching planes, it's in a very similar manner to when researching equipment. You have your various ranks, 1 to 5. And say, for example, I'll use a good example here because a lot of people seem to be quite confused on how the system works, on how you level up individual planes. Uh, but it's actually quite relatively straightforward. Say, for example, I've got all these planes with the Germans right now. As you have noticed, I've leveled them up all the way until tier 4. And because this is a new patch, there has been new lower tier planes added. And so, like the BF-109 F1 and F2, I don't have them right now. So, in order for me to actually get these planes, I have to first research them. As you can see, I have a little bit of progress on them. So, in order to research them... I have to go out into games, play games, and that will add points automatically to my plane of choosing. Now, if in order to actually research a, tr a plane, you have to have first researched previous planes and have gotten enough equipment on them firstly. 
So for example, if I go over to my BF109 E1 over here, you'll notice that because I already purchased this plane in the previous patch, I have the BF109 F1 unlocked. However, if you were to just start this game and start ranking up the Germans, you would have to buy various equipment, work your way down until you were able to unlock the BF109 F1, at which stage it would turn from a red icon into the icon you see right now, where it has a research bar on it, if you were to research, try to research it. And by doing that, then after you go out into games, it can be with any plane, uh, that you fly out with, all that XP that you earn will go towards that one individual plane that you are trying to level up. Now, I said it was a similar system to equipment. You can only level up one plane at a time. So you could have various planes uh, available to start researching, but you have to press the research button, one of, like one of these over here, and that will research that individual plane. So in order for me to start getting this F2, I would first have to research this plane, buy it, and then level it up individually so that I can get all these various equipment, go on down all the way until I get to BF109 F2, at which stage it will turn from a, r a red icon over to an unlocked icon, similar to these other icons here, and then... I'd have to start researching it by pressing this research bar and all my future XP from other battles would go towards use it, using uh, into, into this F2 so I could get it eventually. But there is a way around that if you have golden eagles to spare. You can just use your research points up here, convert them and put it straight into your BF109 F1, F2, whatever it is and you automatically just unlock that plane. However, the conversion rate is pretty crummy. Do you want an idea of how it looks like? So say I need 17,000 uh, points in total. I've already got about 2,000. How much is it going to cost me? Well, in order to get about 15,000 XP, mind you, this is for a low tier plane. That's 377 golden eagles. That's a lot for a low tier plane. Considering that a higher tier plane would cost a lot more, uh, it's it's going to be a lot of golden eagles. Previously, in patch 1.35 and before, you would just have to convert XP, level up straight to level 20 if you wanted to get a level 20 jet, and then you would just have to buy um, your way up to that jet. But now you've also got to research it, and it's just a way of monetizing the game even more. Alright, so I guess you guys are probably dying to find out what the new planes are. There are a lot of new planes in this patch. And we'll start off from left to right, so USA first. The USA get two new planes, one at tier 2, the P400, and they also get one at tier 5, the F9F2 Panther. Unfortunately, I don't have jets, so I can't comment much on jets and how this is going to compare to other planes. But with the P400, it's the predecessor of the Era Cobra. So there's the P39N0 and the P39Q5, and the P400 starts this tree. When looking at the armaments of the P400, it looks very, very similar to the other Era Cobras. However, it's a weaker version of the Era Cobras. It's got a single nose-mounted 20mm Hispano cannon and six 7.62mm Browning machine guns on the wings. Seems decent, but kind of lacking in firepower. I mean, you know, that's only one 20mm cannon. It's not a 37mm derp, but fair enough. With the Germans, they get five planes. Uh, two of which we were discussing in our research example, the BF-109 F1 with two 7.92 millimeters and a single 20 millimeter cannon, and that's going to be nose mounted. This is what the BF-109 F1 looks like, nose mounted cannon, mm -hmm. very nice. <laughs> the BF-109 F2 has a single 15 millimeter cannon with 200 rounds, so not as large caliber, but more ammo, and it has two 7.92 millimeter uh, machine guns so it looks very very oop that's not the right one if I could bring this one out it looks very very similar to the F1 doesn't it but different armaments the Germans also get the Focke-Wulf A8 
which uh, comes out over here and leads on to the Falker Wolf F8. There are two 13mm machine guns, 900 ammo, four 20mm ca uh, cannons with 780 ammo. Will look very similar to the F8, no doubt, so I don't think there's a point of showing you guys it in the hangar. There's also the D9 that comes out before the D12. Those are the armaments right there. And, lo and behold, the one that everyone's been waiting for, the Henschel 129B3 with the 75mm derp. Yeah. Uh, you have to first work your way from the B2 up onto the B3, but man, is it going to be worth it because it's just going to be so troll. So this is the B3 right here. Look at that giant penis. Seriously, like... Look at how massive that thing is. Uh, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna spoil it too much. But every time you fire this thing, your plane will jolt downwards. Uh, it, it's ridiculous. I'm not gonna spoil the footage by showing you guys some actual gameplay footage. But uh, look forward to the third video when I'm gonna be showing off this plane. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Right, so next we've got the USSR. The USSR gets six new planes, such as the Yak-9U at Tier 4. This thing comes with uh, these armaments, a single 20mm um, cannon. And it doesn't really seem like that much. It just leads on to, you know, the other Yaks. Oh gosh, why to do that? That's an annoying feature, actually. If you scroll too much, it automatically changes to the next faction. They also get the Yak-9 UT down here, still tier 4. Uh, they also get the MiG-315 BK, the I-185 M82 with three 20mm cannons, awesome amount of firepower at tier 3. They get the LA-9 with four 23mm cannons, wow, that's a lot of firepower right there very a lot of the firepower that's just gonna wreck uh stuff and that, that that definitely will compete with the falker wolves in terms of fire output and you also get the falker wolf 190 d9 which is a bit infamous for how much it's gonna cost the most expensive plane in the game 7420 golden eagles to purchase this thing but uh yeah that that, that is a lot of golden eagles I should mention one thing though, the 9UT over here can unlock a 45mm cannon or a 37mm um, cannon, cannon on it as well. So whatever to your choosing. Moving on to the British, they don't get a lot of love this patch, admittedly. Not a lot. They get two Tempests. Uh, if we head over to over here, you'll see one of them. That is the Tempest Mark V Sir 2. Yeah, Sir 2 right there. And you also get the Tempest Mark 2. The nice thing about the Mark V Sir 2, I, I think it means serial 2, I, I th I'm presuming anyway, is that it gets a, a huge amount of derp. Like, I mean, look at this. Right, here we go. Here we go. Let's take a look at this. Hello, 47mm beauties. Hello. <laughs> It's not a single one. It's two on the wings. Oh my gosh. Doesn't this thing just sort of like scream to you like, I don't know, like an AT Walker from Star Wars? It just sort of reminds me of that. Or like a Terminator just jousting out like ready to kill you, a T-1000, I don't know. It just looks crazy, crazy good. Has 72 ammo between... Uh, between those two cannons as well. That's that's a decent amount. It's not terrible for the Japanese Japanese get quite a bit of love and I'm, I'm so glad they do because uh, Having looked at these planes already I'm, I'm happy that they've been added because it gives the Japanese a competitive edge in higher tiers So starting it off with a premium plane. We've got the H a 7 H e 1 at tier 1 which has seagull like wings um, and probably uh, probably because it was a carrier-based one, at least I'm presuming if it has ones like these, because a lot of carrier-based aircraft actually had seagull wings, but taking a look at that, it's very reminiscent of, like, the HE-112, isn't it? It's very reminiscent of the HE-112. In fact, it just looks like an exact copy. <laughs> 
Uh, they've also got the A6 M3 Mod 22 Co, giving more firepower to the Japanese arsenal at tier 3. It looks very, very similar to the uh, A6 M3. But wait, hold on. Wait, where's the Mod 22? Have they just renamed this thing to the Mod 22 Co and not the Mod 22? Oh man. Really, guys, Jen? No, they haven't. I'm lying. Here we go. <laughs> it's because it's a hidden away tech tree. It's the Mod 22 right here and also the Co. Alright. So that's uh, adding more firepower. A6M5 Otsu at tier 4. You've also got the Kai 84 Ko, the Kai 84 Otsu, the Kai 84 High, and also the B7A2. But what really strikes me and is quite important is these later tier Japanese fighters. The problem I had in previous in previous patches, so 1.35 and before, is that the Japanese didn't have a lot of planes above tier 9. And most particularly, they failed a lot in arcade battles in terms of doing damage. In historical, they could have been alright, you know, the Ko was is a very powerful plane, whatnot. Um, but in arcade battle, they were just so underwhelming. They just died so much after tier 9 because they didn't get more firepower and they were just essentially the same planes whilst the ed enemy aircraft, you know, you eventually came against Fokker Wolves with 6 cannons and BF-109s with a huge amount of cannons and whatnot. Planes, the enemy just got better and your planes just basically stayed, stayed the same. But now, like with the Kai-84 Ko at tier 3, You've got two 12.7s and then two 20mm cannons. With the Kai 84 Otsu, you got four 20mm cannons, which is great. And with the Kai 84 High, you've got two 30mm cannons and two 20mm cannons, which is really. I'm just so happy because it gives them a fighting edge at higher tiers uh, in arcade battles, most, most specifically. So, really happy to see those additions to the Japanese tree and that pretty much summarizes all the plane additions to the game. One thing that I have noted and it's not in the patch notes is that you're not able to see planes that you don't like special premium planes that you don't already have purchased. So for example like the D521 it should be sitting just below the D520 but I can't see it because I don't have it unlocked. And you can only get it from special circumstances. Whereas the uh, Russian P39 OSU, I have it here showing because I've unlocked it. But normally for you guys, if you don't have it unlocked, you won't be able to see this here. Uh, you can only get this during special uh, events that go on, usually Russian holidays or whatnot. Alright, so there's some points I want to bring up about the tiering of certain planes. Uh, and most particularly, for example, like with the Americans, the XP-50 is now at tier 2. I'm just thinking like WTF is going on. This plane is insanely good uh, if it's going to be coming out in tier 2. It's going to be destroying bombers, no doubt. It's got two 20mm cannons and two uh, Browning machine guns, but it, it, it those cannons really do feel powerful. It can climb like no other plane as well. The rate of climb, as you can see, is 32.3, which is just an insane amount. But maybe they want to give this plane some sort of uh, unique features for its tier. Maybe that's why it's at its tier, tier 2. But also, you've got the XP-38G and P-38G at tier 2, which is kind of unusual because previous in, in 1.35 and before, it was at around tier 11, and that was very bad of Ford's tier. It, it just got decimated. It was hard to play it, but I, this is actually a welcome change to me uh, to see it now because it has a competitive edge. It can take on a lot of these planes at tier 2 and also its flight model has been adjusted to be close to historical da data. Not entirely accurate, but close. So it's nice to see that some work has been done to this and it'll be Probably welcoming to see more of these things flying in the sky and actually getting kills. I need to start leveling them up. I don't have anything leveled with them. But one last thing I wanted to bring up was the tiering of the boomerangs. In one of my previous videos of the War Thunder gameplay footage on the PS4, 
They are running on patch 1.36. The Boomerang Mark 1 and 2 were placed at tier 3. And I was just saying, like, this this sucks. This is going to be a derp for the Boomerangs. They're going to get destroyed by the Mark 1B late and whatnot. But it's uh, good to see that they've since been moved down to tier 2, where that's probably more of a comfortable place for them to be. So, some last changes that are worthy to note. The game is now running in DirectX 11. You can turn that on by going to your launcher options for your graphics and selecting DirectX 11. The stack cards for individual planes are shown along the left-hand side now. Um, when you want to change planes on cruise, you press this button down here to do it. And now, it looks a little bit crummy though, in my opinion. I think there's not enough contrast between planes that you don't have trained on your crew and planes you do have changed, trained on your crew. So, suggestion for Gaijin, if you do happen to watch my videos and listen to my commentary, here's a suggestion for you. Because there's not much contrast between your planes, uh, it makes it kind of hard to see what you do have trained and what you don't. So rather than having this whole big jumbled system, why not just make it so that you see the o only see the planes that you have trained on that particular crew. And so that would make it a lot less cluttered and you could easily select uh, your planes that you have available and also send any uh, crews on holiday. And if you did want to actually get new planes on, on, a, on a crew, what you could maybe do is go into the research tree select the plane, and then select the crew, and then just train it. It would be so much easier, less cluttered, make it look nicer. The last thing that's uh, worthy to note is that the matchmaker is is changed quite substantially, actually. I noticed whenever I went out into battles, it wasn't just waiting in a queue sort of thing until there was enough people. It seems like the battle starts instantly, and people are subsequently just put into that available game and so what happens is that the game will actually end up starting for I don't know how long it doesn't seem like too long it doesn't put you into a game that's already like halfway through but if there's a a game that's relatively new it'll just end up putting you in there uh, progressively while, rather than making the queue times long so that you can start playing straight away interesting and I think that actually makes the game seem like there's a lot more people online at a time gets you into games quicker so anyway guys that's all that I have on the preliminary patch notes now I'm sure you're interested in seeing the new maps and also individual flights of planes and those are going to be coming in the next two videos so until then i'll catch you guys later